And away we go. It is the nightcap. It's the evening cap. I had this evening, I guess. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Right here on BearcatJournal.com. www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Go to the website. They will bring it right to your front door. Pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop. Or go down to Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. And save yourself 15% off of the galactic goodness. All right, let's get this show on the road. How's it going, Aaron? How's your How's your Saturday? Uh, it's always a letdown after so much basketball the last two days to have to wait for a game after the first game. You just have to wait for the first game. Granted, there was at least Cincinnati in between, but, you know, just watching tournament play, and it slows down after that first two days. Yeah, I don't – I mean, I don't love how they do Saturday and Sunday where you get those first two windows are just one game. Yeah. But then tonight, like basketball everywhere again. So, and the moment. Uh, Cincinnati, 74 57 winners over a, a really good Bradley team. That I, I mean, I'll just start here. Aaron. I don't know about you. I thought that was one of their most complete games of the year. I, uh, the, the announcer said as much. Um, saying that the the offense flowed probably better than they've seen. I don't want to take anything away from the body of work that just that uh, Dede has put in all season long because he's been a warrior through and through. But it did flow a little differently today with Jizzle James getting the start. Yeah. Um, now I will say here, I think Jizzle got very fortunate early. Because they tried to pick on him in the pick and roll, and he struggled getting over screens. He got caught on a lot of screens, and they didn't make him pay. And then as the game wore on, he got more comfortable, and he played better defense. Uh, about the first 15 minutes of the first half, I thought they they gave him problems defensively. Um, but again, they didn't capitalize on it. I mean, generally... The guy he guarded for most of their game, their point guard, Dean, had five points. He was two of ten from the floor and one of eight from three. And uh, I didn't I, – I thought he had good looks early, but credit to Jizzle because the more he played, the more confidence he built, and the better he played defensively from front to back. And, I mean, I haven't – I got to upload it right now, actually. Um, the comment from Bradley's head coach was interesting. What was that? Uh, basically said, look, I, I'm not taking anything away from Day Day Thomas because he has been a great player this year. But when you're game planning, Jizzle is, is a much tougher guy to game plan for because he can do so much offensively um, he can create his own shot as well as anyone on this team um if not probably better, better. than anyone on this team well I, I i yes probably i mean he has uh he has something in his bag that nobody else has and that's that jump range that mm -hmm. mid-range stop and pop, and he can hit it all the way around. Like, it, it's not just a lot of guys, like, they have, like, one one thing they can do on that mid-range jumper. They can hit it from 15 feet straight away, or they can hit it from the baseline. He can pull up with that thing and just – there's a magnet in the bottom of the net. It, the crazy thing is it doesn't look good. It comes out mostly flat. And it's like he's throwing darts, right? Like, boom. It's, and it just, it's, boom. it's the fadeaway, boom. though, that makes it dangerous because no yeah. one, I, I don't know that anyone's blocked it this season. I don't think anyone has actually gotten a handle well, on it. Right. This and that's, entire season. That, but that's the point I'm making, Aaron. Generally, with that shot, you've got to get it up, like to get it over hands. 
and he just yeah. has it so quick, and he just flicks it. He just darts it into the net, and it is deadly. And once he got that cooking today, I mean, he finished 11 of 17 from the floor, 2 of 5 from 3. He hit his only free throw. Uh, he only had one assist, but he only had one turnover. That That's the big thing. One turnover in 38 minutes handling all of the point guard responsibilities. Well, the biggest um, thing I want to I wanted to point out with with Jizzle for me anyway is just the fact that the biggest knock on him. I know you brought up his defense already. The biggest knock on him has been his defense throughout the season, um, and I think that today we got to see him instead of running out with the second team, we got to see him running out with yeah. the first team, and I think that that it's a little easier to disguise some deficiencies. And everyone, and I did when wanna, you're running, I did want to. I did want to get to that. I thought they did a really good job early, giving him help, so that he mm -hmm. wasn't part of the problem with him. Has been this defense leaves you on an island. The way that they handle ball screens, and he's not as good. Let's just call it what it is. He's not as good at beating ball screens as Day Day Thomas is, and they play them the same. Like the coverage is the same whenever whoever the point guard is. They don't change the coverage for Jizzle. I didn't think they necessarily changed it, but I think they did a better job specifically backside for help. Jizzle, backside help, staying connected. Like that point guard, even though Jizzle was getting hit and wasn't getting over the top, we didn't see their point guard controlling the action coming off of the screen because there was usually somebody in the vicinity uh, that made it that made it a challenge for him. So uh, it was a great effort, team defense early. And then I thought as Jizzle got going, he got better uh, and played with more confidence defensively, especially in the second half. But, I mean, he came out for one stretch in the first half for about a minute and a half. They yep. sat him out around the – it was right around the under eight timeout. CMOS came comes out. in, point forward. But it was like a minute. I mean, literally, he played 38 Not plus long. minutes. It was like a minute yeah. and a half. And then, I mean, Jizzle didn't, to his credit, he did not look gassed at any point in that game. No. Nope. And I, I think that that bodes well for the success of this team going forward through this tournament. Uh, I think that, you know, what we saw today was obviously a huge confidence boost. I, I don't know that anyone would argue that Jizzle James was the MVP of this game, period, the end. Um, I don't know that. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, Seamoss was great in the had, first half. Dan had good CMOS, games. CMOS but, was great in the first half. Dan was great in the second half. Jizzle was was really uh -oh. good consistently throughout. Uh oh, what? Uh, give me one second. I'm struggling with my audio here. I don't know what happened. I will let you know when I get you back. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Check, check, check. Uh oh, are you? Is your battery dead? You got to plug it in. He can't hear me. I don't know why I'm talking to him. Can't hear a word that I'm saying. Um, but that was the big thing for me. Like you worry at the end of halves for a guy that is has been used as you know about a about a half of the game. Um, at, at that kind of clip to jump him up to 38 minutes. What is his energy level going to be like? And uh, there were a couple times where in that second half, it felt like Bradley, they got the lead up to 19. And then Bradley kept getting it down around 12, 11, 12, 13. And it felt like Jizzle had an answer most of the time. Uh, they they got it to nine with 644 left. And, and that was a point where it was like, if this thing, if this thing gets to, you know, five, six points at the at the final media stop, Bradley's going to have a real chance to win the game because they've got weapons offensively uh, that I thought Cincinnati did a really good job defending. But you start getting some momentum. Things start rolling downhill. You start throwing a few shots in. And all of a sudden, you know, that 12, 13-point cushion that you had is down to six, and you're backpedaling. 
And I really thought Jizzle did a good job navigating that and making sure that they kept that 11, 12, 13 point lead uh, where they had just enough cushion to stay ahead of uh, of Bradley through those those segments, right? Basically, from the under eight to the under four. For me, that is nobody talks about this segment ever. That segment for me, especially in a game like this, where you're up 10, 11 points, if they get you within striking distance in that when you get to the under four, they go into that huddle with a with momentum and belief. And it was critical, I thought, for Cincinnati to take that. And by the time uh we got to the media timeout, they were up 14. Uh, and and that was Jizzle made a uh driving layup, got the and one to put him up 12. And then he came back and hit another pull-up jumper to put him up 14. And that took you to the uh that was the last point scored before the media timeout. And I mean, it was it was critical to go into that media timeout up 14 instead of, you know, if they have a, a little spurt when it's at nine and it's down to five or six, you're hanging on for dear life. And we've seen enough of that, right? Hanging on for dear life to the finish line. And that wasn't the case. They had a comfortable lead and they were able to slow it down. Notice they did that today, Aaron. They slowed it down. They, they finally figured out how to play with the lead. The circles. They, they milked some clock, and they got out of there with the victory. So not enough good things can be said about Jizzle James today. I was I was overly concerned. Just having one point guard, you haven't been used to playing that way. Jizzle hasn't used to been playing this much. Um, but he was he was dominant today. He was outstanding. He – I guess my favorite thing about him today was just his choice, his shot selection. Um, was phenomenal. We did talk already about 11 of 17, 2 of 5 from uh, 3 today, but just watching him, he didn't take a shot at any point in time where you looked at it and you're like, what are you, what are you doing? What is right. that? Um, so I don't know. They, they all came at opportune times. It didn't seem forced at any point in time. Um, I don't know. I, I To your point, yes, I, I agree that you can't say – good enough or quite enough about the performance today by Jizzle James. Yeah. I mean, he was, uh, he was electric and he was a problem for Bradley's defense. They never, they never looked comfortable, especially CMOS comes out and bangs three threes early. And yeah. I, they're a team that they have a three, two zone that they like to play. And they played it a little bit. But you could tell they weren't comfortable with it the way Cincinnati was shooting. And I think that kept them out of it and, and didn't allow them to kind of sit back in that zone and throw Cincinnati's offense off rhythm. So uh, CMOS hitting shots early like he did was really important for the start of this game. Uh, and then, you know, the way it flew after that was, was like I said, it's, it's as good as I think, you know, I, I felt like they played. Uh, through the back half of the season. Well, uh, we talk about players they didn't have an answer for. Dan Skillings has to be mentioned as a player they didn't have an answer for because Dan Skillings pretty much had his way with this defense all day long. He got to the rim at any point in time he decided he was going to the rim. Yep. Um, resulting in, if it didn't result in points, it pretty much resulted in either points or free throws. Yeah, I mean, he did still have a couple couple Dan moments <laughs> where it's you're just Dan's on the jam. you're on the Dan Skilling's roller coaster. Uh but you know what my favorite play from today was with Dan? I'll the offensive rebound? No. After the you know which one I'm talking about after that three yeah. where he got yeah. He slithered in and got it and laid it back up. Did, no. did what he does. For me, it was ball gets knocked away and is rolling slowly out of bounds on the other end of the floor where Bradley would have had the ball out of bounds under their basket. And Dan sprinted 
sprinted all the way down the left sideline, right in front of Bradley's bench. And not only did he pick it up, but he just started dribbling. Right? Like normally you want to stop and grab that ball with your hands, right? Not not Circus Dan. Circus Dan just starts dribbling it <laughs> and gets it. The shot clock is still running down. Gets it back to Jizzle, and Jizzle goes straight down the court, lay up on the left-hand side. At the buzzer. At the buzzer on the shot clock. Like, Dan's yep. hustle to get to that ball was phenomenal. Because generally, that's a ball you just let go out of bounds. And you deal with giving up possession. Uh, Dan's pass to Jizzle. The Jizzle kicked out of bounds. was great, too. It yeah, was, uh, it, was, it was a great pass. How about uh, Aziz? using those long to kind of flip one all the way back out to the top of the key that they yeah. got and, and got points up. The effort today was outstanding. It was, it was outstanding. A, it was definitely a different energy that they played with today than it was just a couple nights ago. Well, and this is, I, we talk, I talked about this, uh, you were sleeping, so you missed it. Um, I had <laughs> audio issues, man. I don't even know. No, I was talking about Wednesday night. You were sleeping, so oh. you missed it. Um, yeah, I did do that. There, morning. the show must go on, Aaron. Um, uh -huh. there, there was uh, when you get into the NIT. Generally, if you're the you know you're a team that was on the bubble, you're disappointed that you're in the NIT. You are not super stoked about hey, let's go play this NIT game. Um. And you're a little disjointed, a little flat. Your energy's a little low. Like, we, we see that with a lot of these teams that have bigger uh, aspirations. And then by the time you get that first win and you start to feel a little better about yourself, and now your blood's pumping on like, okay, let's go win this thing. Let, let's, go, let's go have a good showing uh, and not embarrass ourselves. And a lot of times in game two, you come out with with uh, a little more focus because they didn't have great focus. I don't think that's even remotely in question. They didn't have great no. focus against San Francisco. No. Um, but then you have a game like today, and you get to see what the future of this team could look like with guys like Jizzle and Dan playing at that level. I think that Big 12 could look a little different next year. Did you have any thoughts on anybody from uh, Bradley's team? Yeah, they stunk. The whole team stunk. 57 points. There would have been a lot less if they didn't. Ah, never mind. We'll leave it alone. We'll talk about it later. Uh, I thought Dan did a really good job on Hickman. Uh, Hickman did get going. He got he got eight in a flurry where he hit two threes uh, and, then, and then had a little floater or whatever. Um, but, uh, Dan did a good job on him, especially in the second half, but yet Hickman had 12 in the first half, uh, and, um, had two in the second half. So I, I asked him about a post game and he said they didn't really change coverages. They just did a better job slowing me down. Um, that's a great point. D. Smith, the team's won six of their last eight. That is not a team limping to the finish line of the season. They are, I mean, I, you can't really argue they're learning to close games the way the San Francisco game, <laughs> they did close it, but that was not, that didn't come from the textbook. Let's just say. But no, they're, they're playing a little more confident. They're playing a little more free. They're, they're doing a better job spreading the ball around, and uh, I, I like the way this team is trending. I really do. Um, can we get to one of my favorite moments in a long time at Fifth Third Arena? What's that? John Newman makes a, a free throw, gets his 1,000th point, yeah. and that crowd gave him a – lengthy ovation. I think it was uncomfortable because he still had a free throw to shoot uh, and he didn't really expect it. Uh, but they put it up on the video board right when the free throw went through the net. The entire place got on their feet. Even the Bradley fans 
uh, gave him a, a nice ovation and uh, just really happy for John to get that. Well, yeah, he I mean, battled his ass off all year. Well, not just this year, but since he's been here, he's, he's had yeah. to work through quite a bit of adversity. Uh, I think it's something that you're not going to see a ton of going forward in this new era of transfer portal and all of that, that you're not going to see guys becoming 1000 point players on a ton of different teams. Well, he's, so, it's between Clemson and UC. He didn't have a thousand at Cincinnati. Okay, it was just a thousand career total. A thousand okay. career points, yeah. Gotcha. But because of the transfer portal, and let's not forget, John transferred. Um, but because of that, I don't think I think it's more difficult for guys to make that connection with a fan base, and that's has not like this fan base has embraced John Newman. Yeah, because he. Is what Bearcat, Bearcat basketball has always been. Right. When you when you put together in your head a prototypical Bearcat guy, he is what John Newman has emulated the entire yeah. time that he has been here. So awesome for John. Uh, he had a rough one Wednesday night. So it was really good to see him get back yeah. on track. He hit that first three, which usually is a really good sign for him. Um, he was playing a little bit more aggressive and, uh, shots were falling. So, yeah. Um, I mean, big dog, if we got a, if you have to write a 300 word dissertation on something you didn't like, the game went pretty well. <laughs> I know what sequence he was talking. You know, I, yeah, but that's circus it. dance. That's circus it was, dance. <laughs> it was. It, it deserved 300. It, it deserved a dissertation to <laughs> describe. We all watched that sequence wondering what the fuck is going on here. <laughs> that whole sequence was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, also, let's talk about this. Did you notice the change at the end of the game? Hmm, trying to think about when it was time what? to go to Jameel Reynolds to back up Aziz Bandego at the five spot. And Jameel what? stayed on the bench and Odie Oguama. Yeah, Odie minutes. I, I didn't know if you had already gotten to the Odie stuff because it was in the in the chat here and I, I had the audio issues, obviously. No, we're we're just now getting to it. But I I would play Odie right now over Jameel. Well, I and I wonder, I'm curious. If you're going to potentially next season see maybe a little bit more small ball, um, where you have potentially Tyler McKinley running at the five spot instead of the four spot, um, or something of that nature, um, because you, I don't know whether Vic is here or not. Who know who's to say whether whether both centers return? Who's to say who? The, the transfer portal is a, a wild, wild thing, as we've come to find out. Sure. Um, so I would certainly be interested to see what happens if there is more small ball here over the course of the uh, the next, at least the next game uh, in this tournament. Yeah. Uh, let's let's have this conversation. Millie isn't processing things fast enough. I don't think he's lazy. I think he just can't get up to speed mentally, especially on defense and help side defense. I think it's effort, John. I don't think it's lazy. I don't I, I, his motor runs low. And if your motor runs low, you're gonna look a step slow. You're gonna and especially at this level of basketball. He is just not a high energy guy. He I said this today. He makes Yancey Gates look like Justin Jackson. Oh. Everybody had problems with Yancey's motor. Yancey, Yancey was scoring 15 and grabbing eight, seven, eight rebounds with a low motor. If Jamil was scoring 10 and grabbing five, six rebounds in the minutes that he's in, I don't think anybody would have a problem with this. But he's playing... 13, 14, 15, 17, whatever minutes. And he's getting one point. He's getting no points. Like it, he, you know what teams, they teams have pulled the chair out from under him three games now, Aaron, where they have figured out when he gets the ball and he goes bowling in a China shop, as soon as he dribbles, 
and then he tries to do this. They just step away, and he falls every time. All in the china shop is a good way to describe it. Um, there was well a done. picture in the San Francisco game, Aaron, where he is falling, and the and the defender is just doing this, like oh, got him again. Pull the chair yeah. out, right? Whoop. Yeah, the turnover's not great. Um, he hasn't been getting he hasn't been getting the travel calls, I guess at least. But it's just awesome. a different <laughs> a different type of turnover. Um, he played eleven points. He had he didn't take a shot. 11 minutes. Or 11 minutes. He didn't take a shot. No points. Three rebounds, two turnovers in 11 minutes. That's not good enough. I guess at the end of the day, for me, I'm not going to knock the backup center a ton. He's playing at this point, at this point, 10, 15 minutes a game. He's spelling Aziz, whether Aziz has foul trouble or whether would, Aziz but it would be nice a, a breath. Aaron. He's supposed to be your offensive change of pace at center. I agree. He's not scoring. I understand. And he did that's, miss. That's... He, he missed half a season for whatever that's worth. I'm curious to see if he is, if he's, if he's back here next year, what that looks like with an entire off season, knowing that you're actually going to get to play game one, as opposed to whatever. Seamus got hit by a car and you hate on him every chance you get. He's, that's because he's supposed to be a scorer. He was brought in to be a scorer. Jamil wasn't brought in to be a scorer. He was brought in to be a big man. Bullshit. No, he was brought in to be the offensive presence at center. Well, who brought him in, though? His coach is not here. He's not scoring. Well, the guy who had a vision for Jamil is not here. You pick and choose who you make excuses for and who you. We don't. all do. We all do. I just don't like his effort, and I and the problem, the problem with it is when I talk about motor. I don't think it's intentional. Like I, I don't think he's out there trying to be lazy or trying to like not help the team, but motor is something that nine times out of ten, man, you have it or you don't. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, I'd say. You, you are either a guy that plays with great motor or you are a guy that just does not have that that trait. And if you don't have that trait, basketball is real hard. It's real hard. As things currently stand, you got three guys returning next year, potentially, potentially. That, that play the five spot. So I don't know that I would necessarily be trying to run anyone off at that position knowing how difficult it can be in the portal to get a dude at the five spot. And you're talking about the backup, essentially, as long as Aziz yeah. is also still here. So I just would like something out of him. Hey, I, I agree. That's my argument on number 10. So he made, he scored three today. That's three more than Jameel Reynolds did. Something about blind squirrels and nuts. I don't know. Well, here's that there is a difference there, Aaron. Josh is very good at defense. His offense is lacking. He's very good at defense. Jamil couldn't guard you. Well, I'm almost 40 now. Maybe five years ago. <laughs> oh. He should chew less gum. Maybe that would help. <laughs> Jamil had to lose 50 pounds to get where he is as I eat these Oreos. <laughs> oh that that Doug. Yeah. What else you want to talk about? Um I don't know. We could talk about the fact that Vic did not get any minutes today. I don't know if there's yeah. anything there to West said after the game, healthy, good to go. Coach's decision, DNP. What are your thoughts there? Uh, he alluded to practice. So my guess is he has looked in practice kind of like he looked at the beginning of that San Francisco game when they tried to put him in, and he looked like the last place he wanted to be was on a basketball court. There are minutes to be had. And if you're not giving great effort, and if you're not, if your head's not in the right place, you're not going to get them. Well, and that's, that's where I'm concerned with. If you're running out Jamil, Maybe you're at that point trying to look for not one but two big spots, and that's a scary place to be. 
Um, that said, uh, CMOS, 17 points today, 6 of 16 from the field, 5 of 13 from 3. Lots of heat checks in this one for CMOS. <laughs> he had the one in the first half where he hit – he thought he was on another one of those uh, 8 for 10 stretches because he hit his first two, and then he pulled up from about 28 <laughs> yeah. at the front of the rim, barely. He was – he was the streaky guy coming off a three-point bender. Now that yeah. said, he uh, he has been playing his best basketball this last month. Um, his, well, his best five of thirteen. Still, I'll take five of thirteen all day. I'd much rather that was like five of eight, five of ten. But okay, but he was five of thirteen, and I will take that percentage all day or day. That's still right around forty percent. If the guy shoots forty percent from three, you take it. He's not going to shoot 80% all the time, Aaron, like he did Wednesday night. It would be nice. I'd love that. Uh, but yeah. that's not how it's going to happen. He also is the only uh, guy you have to stretch the defense, to, to that, that defenses have to respect. And the more he hits, the more when he's doing those baseline, like hiding and coming around, like they know if he has one inch of daylight, he's one of the better, like, coming off a screen catch and shoot guys you'll ever see rhythm, yeah a rhythm shooter yeah and but well like most today, of the time catch and shoot guys are just standing right standing yeah. waiting for the ball and they shoot it when he's curling I, off that screen I give boy, you Jeremiah Davenport <laughs> right Jeremiah thought he could shoot curling off the screen but no that ain't usually it. Pow, pow. uh but when CMOS is coming off that screen boy and he catches it in rhythm that thing is in right now yeah um and his defense has improved dramatically over the course of the season two steals today uh five rebounds those were stats that we weren't talking about uh even halfway through the the big 12 slate so yeah. ha happy to see that that's continuing to improve because that's made and him... only one turnover the, the, those for days him, have been rare for him. Those days have been him, rare for him. Yeah, for him, that's pretty good. I mean, he's asked to, we've talked about it ad nauseum. He's asked to do more than he probably should be asked to do. Yeah. But you can't turn it over four or five, six times a game. So him. But how much of that goes back to Jizzle being able to run this offense a little bit differently than it runs through Day Day? I think it actually runs more fluidly through Day Day because Jizzle wants to get buckets. Jizzle is looking to put it on the floor and put buckets on your head. Maybe, though, that's why CMOS isn't dribbling so much and getting turnovers. Yeah. Uh, 5 of 13 three-point shooting is 38%. That equates to 57% from two-point range. Aaron is a math guy that hates math. I hate threes. It's aesthetically unpleasing. Go dunk on someone's head. What happened it's to post-game? Post-game is not... Post Jamil Reynolds shows you what happened to post game. It, it's yeah, fast. somebody you, you you try to crash to the rim and somebody just gives you the oh <laughs> never shoot twos ever. I agree, Diesel. Ugh. Never unless you're Jizzle uh. James. I will let Jizzle James shoot twos. He can shoot all the damn twos he wants. Danny shoots twos better than he shoots threes. He shoots like yeah. one of one of eight. You have two point guards that are much better shooting long 17 point jumpers than they yeah. are threes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Day Day, broken foot. Sucks. Sucks. My, uh, my understanding is that they expect him back um, by workouts this summer. So that is a. Uh, very much a positive. But sucks for him. You get all the way to this yeah. point. Uh, but thank God he did. Could you imagine if he'd have broke his foot against like Florida Gulf Coast and they had to go through the Big 12 with one point guard? Whoo! Uh, no, I don't want to imagine that. That would be not right. fun to have talked about. Although we might have seen the maturation of Jizzle James a little bit sooner than we did. Yeah, but you also might have seen him break down if you had... Could have. Sure. 18 games where you're asking him to play 38 minutes. I mean, that's not sustainable. Luckily, you are at the end. 
uh, where you, you don't have to ask him to do that. But that's something as a freshman, especially like Jamal Shedd has been building his body to that point for, you know, a career in college. Jizzle's body isn't really ready to uh, take the beating that is uh, 38 and a half minutes a night. Yeah. Well, it would have been a lot. Luckily, we'll um, never have to know what, what that alternate universe looks like. Right. Uh, Aziz uh, had a had a forgettable day, I thought, uh, as far as... He did a good job plays. protecting the rim, but he didn't do a whole lot else. It just altered shots, really. It wasn't even... Yeah. Th- the blocks weren't there quite like they are. Well, but that's still are. protecting the did. rim if you're making them miss because you're standing back there trying to swing at them. Three, three blocks on the day. Um, eight rebounds. Three of them offensive. Um, I don't know. Just I think there was a shitty lob early in the first half, and they kind of got away from the lobs after that. Um, but shitty lobs have, have been rearing their ugly head here in the last couple games. So they are they're back in full force. So I'm okay if they stay away from the shitty lobs once again for a little while. Um, All right, well, you got anything else? No, I think that's about that's about it. They will uh they will move to take on the winner of Indiana State and Minnesota. That is tomorrow at two o'clock on ESPN two. If Indiana State wins, uh, they will go to Terre Haute. And if Minnesota wins, Cincinnati will host uh, another NIT game, a berth in the NIT Final Four at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse is on the line. Uh, they would uh, much rather, I think, I would think, face Minnesota than try to to go into Terre Haute and and win shorthanded against Indiana State. So I don't care who they play next. Give me the whole damn thing. Aaron wants to win it all now. Yeah, why not? I love it. Yeah. That's why you play the game. Uh all right. Well, uh that's gonna wrap it up. Next game guaranteed either on ESPN or ESPN2. So no more ESPN plus bullshit. That makes me happy. I I don't care either way. I actually kind of like ESPN plus because I can just sit here at my computer. But uh, that's going to wrap it up. We will see you uh, tomorrow night. Aaron and I will kind of go back over the Big 12 uh, in the NCAA tournament. And then BBP on Monday, we will be right back at it. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Enjoy the games tonight. Have some fun. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. That is the Nightcap, brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken, right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!